Okay, so here's that example problem that I promised you on frames and machines. Um, it's the same drawing that we had in the previous video. Just to reiterate, there's a member that goes from A to C. It's supported at point A by a pin connection, at point C by a roller. There's a member that goes from point uh, B to E. It's pinned at E to member AC. It's uh, supported by a member that goes from G and to F. Remember, we can identify that that is actually a two-force member. There are also pulleys attached at point B and point D. And then there's a rope that's attached at point A, goes over the pulley at B, over the pulley at D, and supports an 850 Newton load. So um, uh, the distance from F to B is 275. The distance from E to F is 125. D to C is 250. E to D is 175. G to E is 100. A to G is 200. This angle is 60, which, by the way, you should be able to prove for yourself using these distances. This angle is 66. Again, you should be able to prove that to yourself using these distances. Um, and the other thing that you actually need is the diameter of this pulley located at D. And I've written that over to the side. That's 140. Oops. All of these measurements are in millimeters. Um, you actually will not need the diameter of the pulley at B, and hopefully you'll see why as you proceed through this. So um, if you want, I'll go ahead and pause the video and copy this down, or you can kind of back and go back and forth as you need to uh, through the video. So the question is to find the forces exerted by the pins on the members of the frame. So what I want you to recognize, if I were to blow up, let's see, uh, this point right here, so there's that member that goes from B to E. There's that piece that goes from F over to G. And right in the center is a pin. So if I look right here, there's three things, right? So this member that goes vertical pushes on the pin, right? Pushes on the pin. The pin, in turn, pushes on this member. All right, so the pin pushes on this member. So what we're asking for are these forces being applied to the pins, but you should recognize that all the pins are doing is transferring forces between these these members, okay? So another way to phrase this is what is the force that member GF is applying at point F to member EB, okay? It's kind of the same question. And different books will ask the question differently. So uh, that will help you, uh, hopefully, when you see the questions worded a little bit differently. Okay? So one thing we can do, we talked about this in the last video, is we can draw a free body diagram of the whole thing. So normally what I like to do is do these um, free body diagram equations of equilibrium. So I'm going to try and set that up here. don't have quite as much space, so it might be a little hard. But here's the A to C member. Here's a member that comes up here. Oops, should draw the circle. Here's a circle here. There's a weight pulling down here, and of course there's a rope connected here. This is 850, whoops, 850 Newtons. This is uh, the reaction at C. This is the reaction at A in the X direction. This is the reaction at A in the Y direction. And then we actually need one distance. So I'm going to add all of those distances up, 200, 100, 175, plus 140. And I should get 700, whoops, sorry, looked in the wrong place. I should get 545 millimeters, right? Um, this total distance from A to C, on the other hand, is 725 millimeters, right? So now that I have a free body diagram, I can write equations of equilibrium. I can do the sum of forces in the x direction equals 0 equals AX. Sum of forces in the y direction equals 0 equals ay plus c 
minus 850, oops, equals zero. We can then write the sum of moments around point A because that has two unknowns. Equals zero, that is C times 725 minus 850 times 545, right? And if we do the math, we will find that C equals 639, whoops, 639 newtons. And RAY, or rephrase that, sorry, AY, reaction at A in the Y direction is 211 newtons. So already we've been able to find the support reactions, but that's not really what the questions were. The questions were what's going on inside. Now, the one thing that some students have problems with is they want to uh, draw all of the forces on this three-body diagram, right? So they'll go in here and they'll try and draw this force and this force and they'll draw a force here, etc., etc. When you draw a free body diagram, you do not draw any of those internal forces. We've talked about this before, but it becomes particularly important when we talk about um, modeling a system of individual parts as a single free body diagram. You don't want to draw the internal forces when you do that. We didn't do that when we did trusses, and we don't do it when we do uh, frames and machines. So remember that, and that will help you have extraneous unknowns over here. Okay. Once we've done that, we can draw the free body diagram. Whoops, let me go up here and get it. We can draw the free body diagram of this circle, this pulley right here. So let's do that next. So here's my circle. There's the free body diagram. We'll call it of uh, pulley at B. Okay. I have a force coming back this way. I have a force coming back this way. This is 60 degrees. This is 66 degrees, all right? Um, it's a rope, so I know in both cases that's just the tension in the rope, right? And I also have the pin pushing this way and this way. And so we can call that BX, BX, and B. Y. So now we can write um, equations of equilibrium for this. Now the first thing I want you to notice is let's look at the moment equations. I would take the moment right here at the center point, right? Right here at the center point. And then if I draw a line that intersects this force and another line that intersects that force at right angles, it has to be the radius of this pulley in both cases. That means that T equals T. So that's why for a frictionless pulley, these two forces are related. I don't think we had talked about that before. Um, nonetheless, the sum of the moments basically just gives us that T equals T, which makes perfect sense. It's the sum of the forces in the X direction that's helpful, and the sum of the forces in the Y direction. That is helpful. So let's do some of the forces in the x direction. That's going to be T times cosine of 66 minus T times cosine of 60 plus BX equals 0. Some of the forces in the Y is minus T sine of 66 minus T sine of 60 plus BY equals 0. And uh, you will get that BX equals 79.3 newtons. And B, I'm sorry, I just found a math mistake in my notes. Let me fix it. I believe that you will get B, Y is 15. 10, but let me, I'm going to stop and check that and then come back to you in a second. Yes, I believe that's correct. Um, of course, you should double check with your own math. 
All right, so now we know that information. Now, that is, in effect, the force that the pin is applying to the pulley, but that also means it's the force the pulley is applying to the pin, okay? So now I know the force that the pulley is applying to the pin um, at point B. I would also like to know what's going on at point E and point D, and so the next thing I'm going to do, let me back up and show you, I'd like to know what's going on at point E. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this uh, member that goes from B all the way down to E. Okay, so let's draw that one. That's my next free body diagram. So I'm going to draw that free body diagram right here. And then we know up here we've identified, oops, I hit it just a little bit. I've identified that the pulley is pushing on the pin, right, at BX. That means right, that means the pin has to be pushing on this location in this direction. Right? So let's think about that. Let's ignore the pin for just a second. This pulley is attached here. So if this is pushing on the pulley, the pulley has to be pushing back. Okay? So this is BY, but you notice I've drawn it in the opposite direction between these two free body diagrams. This is BX, again, drawn in the opposite direction. So this is the same trick we were using when we were doing trusses and we determined whether a truss was in tension or compression. Right? Once we knew that, we started drawing them in the correct sense. Here we've identified that, yes, indeed, the force on the pulley is BX positive, which means the force on the member supporting the pulley has to be in the opposite direction. Down here we don't know, so we're just going to write this as EY. And just for fun, I'm going to write this as EX in the opposite direction. I also have a two-force member that goes from point F back here towards uh, point G. So I'm going to write that right here and I'm going to call it FG. You can do a little bit of math to yourself and you can determine that's a 100, 125, 160 triangle. This distance is 125 and this distance is 275. So now I can write again equations of equilibrium. And so first let's do the sum of forces in the x direction. Minus bx minus ex minus fg 100 over 160 equals 0. Sum of forces in the y direction. We have minus, whoops, by plus ey minus fg. Um, and I apologize, I'm not sure why I suddenly started writing this g in lowercase, but nonetheless, uh, 125 over 160 equals 0. And then we can do the moments. And let's do the moments around E. So BY creates no moment around E. BX, on the other hand, BX times 275 plus 125 uh, creates a positive moment around E. And then the X component of FG, right? FG times 100 over 160 times this distance 125 this distance right here 125 also creates a positive moment so now we can solve for all of these things so we would get that F G is equal to minus 406 that indicates that I drew it in the wrong direction and that's all it indicates right we would then find that EX equals 174 and we would find that EY 
equals 1,190. And again, all of these are in newtons. Okay. So now we know what force is being applied by this member FG onto the member BE, which means it's also the force that's being applied to this pin, right? It's being applied to the pin. The pin then applies it to this member. Same argument down here. So what members do we, or what pins do we not know anything about yet? Well, we don't know anything about the pin at G yet, right? Well, wrong, because if we look, the same thing that we drew right here for FG, right? the exact same thing has to be going on here. So since this is a two-force member, once we know what's going on here, we know what's going on down here. The only other thing that's missing is what's going on at this pin D right here. So to do that, or to find that information, we're going to draw a free body diagram of point D, or pulley D. Okay. So we have a force coming up here. 850 newtons, 66 degrees. We have a force down here of 850 newtons. We have dx and we have dy. And we can write the sum of forces in the x direction equals d x minus 850 cosine 66 equals 0. Sum of forces in the y, dy minus 850 plus 850 sine 66 equals 0. And if we do that, we should get that dx equals 346 newtons and dy equals 73.5 newtons. And so now we know all the reactions everywhere. So you see what we did is we started with the problem. We drew a free body diagram of the whole thing. Now, in this case, we were able to solve those equations. You may not always be able to solve the equations, but the equations are still valid. Then we can draw a free body diagram of one of the parts or one of the sections. In this case, we were able to solve those equations. Another section, we were able to solve those equations. Another section we're able to solve those equations. And so you proceed through these problems in stepwise fashion, writing a free body diagram, writing the equations, if possible, solving them before you go on. Or your other option is just to write all those equations and solve them all simultaneously. I hope this example has helped. We obviously will have more, more examples in class. Thank you.